Hello my lovely kids I hope you all are doing well so today we are going to start with lecture number 2 of the chapter plant kingdom as you know we started with some introduction uh, in this chapter and then we started with algae right there uh, there are some parts or there are some topics of algae that we need to discuss today and after that we are going to start with bryophytes and before we start with our uh, today's lecture i really want to uh, wanted to know that i hope you all are enjoying these lectures please let me know in the comment section so without any delay for the delay let's start with algae for the characteristics that we need to discuss right so uh, in the last class i told you according to the types of pigment present in the algae and the chemical present in the cell wall and flagella the arrangement and number of flagella right uh, algae is divided into three groups chlorophyce which is green algae rhodophyce which is red algae and pheophyce which is brown algae the dominant pigment in chlorophyce is chlorophyll the in rhodophyce it is phycoerythrin which is a red color pigment and in pheophyce it is phycoxanthin that's why uh, the member of pheophyce ranges uh, from brown to olive green in color so today we are going to start with flagella right this flagella represents flagella on zoospores or gametes right so they are talking about here about zoospores or gametes so generally in chlorophyce beta the uh, flagella is 2 to 8 in number and apical position which means they are present on the tip and equal flagella all flagella are equal right so in chlorophyce beta the number of flagella ranges between 2 to 8 and they are apical in position which means they are present on the tip and all the flagella are equal in size rhodophyce beta whether it is a gamete or zoospore flagella is absent in rhodophyce remember this this is important flagella is absent in rhodophyce then talking about pheophyce there are two flagella beta two flagella lateral position which means the flagella are present on the sides right an unequal flagella and zoospores and gametes are pear shaped pyriform shaped zoospores and gametes are pear shaped when something is pear shaped we call it pyriform we call it pyriform so zoospores and gametes are pear shaped like this and flagella is present on the side and there is unequal flagella there is unequal flagella right so in pheophyce this type of zoospore or gametes are formed two flagella lateral position unequal flagella and zoospores and gametes are pear shaped let's talk about sexual reproduction now uh, in chlorophyce it can be isogamy similar gametes anisogamy slightly different gametes or oogamy where the male gamete is very uh, small and female gamete is very large where is in rhodophyce it is only oogamy and remember both the gametes are non motile both the gametes are without flagella in rhodophyce and rhodophyce has the most advanced oogamous most advanced oogamy <coughs> 
right so the member of rhodophis is having most advanced ugemi in which both the gametes are non motile now pheophys in the member of pheophys it can be beta isogamy it can be anisogamy or it can be <laughs> sorry ogamy right so it can be isogamy anisogamy or ogamy okay so uh, the, uh, these type of sexual reproduction can, that can occur in the chlorophysi rhodophysi and pheophysi okay so here we have finished uh, the uh, comparison of all three groups i hope every comparison is clear to you i always try to make this in a tabular form so that it is easier for you to understand and let me know if you like this tabular form uh after this i'm going to tell you some special feature of chlorophysi and pheophysi some special features so uh let's move on some special features like in chlorophysi beta in chlorophysi the food is stored mostly in the form of starch right and starch is stored in a body known as pyrenoids starch is stored in the form of pyrenoids what are pyrenoids beta pyrenoids are the structures which is having starch in the periphery and protein in the center these are pyrenoids and they are present inside the chloroplast this is starch and this is protein this is what we call as pyrenoids and they are present inside the chloroplast they are present inside the chloroplast right now talking about chloroplast beta in chlorophysi chloroplast can have various shape chloroplast can be of cup shaped star shaped spiral shaped etc so chloroplast can have various shape in the member of chlorophysi okay so these are some special points of chlorophysi let's discuss some special point of pheophysi after this i'm going to tell you some examples and then we are going to learn about the importance of algae on this earth right for us or on this earth pheophysi has important thing that its body is divided into three parts its body is divided into three parts this body uh, this structure is known as hold fast this is for attachment to any surface so if the member of pheophysi wants to attach to anything it will attach with the help of hold fast this is stipe which means a stalk like structure and this is frown or front this is the actual site of photosynthetic this is the photosynthetic part right this is mostly the photosynthetic part front and in front you will find air bladders which makes the body of algae very light so that it can float easily so these are air bladders to provide buoyancy to make the body of pheophysi very light right so this is how the member of pheophysi looks like so they can ask you question member of which group of algae the body is divided into hold fast type and front right you will choose pheophysi right 
the member of eophyc their body is divided into three parts hold fast type and frond so these are some special feature of algae that you needed to understand right i am giving you few seconds to understand it let me know if you have any doubt in the comment section after this i am going to write some examples some important examples that you need to remember and after that i am going to tell you the importance of algae okay uh, remember beta these pyrenoids are present inside chloroplast present inside chloroplast okay so let's discuss some important examples of algae so i'm going to write it first chlorophyce then rhodophyce then phyophyce so let's write the example of chlorophyce beta here chlamydomonas i'm again telling you according to five system uh, five kingdom classification chlamydomonas in is included in kingdom protista is included in kingdom protista but here in according to some system of classification they are also included in under uh, your algae kingdom plantae then cara volvox pyrogyra eulothrix these are some of the example of chlorophyce rhodophyce porphyra polysiphonia gelidium gracilaria beta remember that the gelidium and gracilaria are the source of agar source of agar so agar is extracted from gracilaria and gelidium we will talk about this phyophyce beta laminaria ectocarpus right laminaria is a kelp right and your dictyota fucus sargassum remember fucus and sargassum are the exception because they are the only diploid algae remember they can ask you which algae is an exception which algae has a diploid body all the body are, all the algae are haploid except fucus and sargassum fucus and sargassum their body is having two sets of chromosome in their body okay they are having two sets of chromosome in their body so fucus and sargassum are the diploid algae okay so these are the example of chlorophyce rhodophyce and phyophyce these are the in most important example that you need to remember right so i have only written the most important examples here i am giving you few seconds if it, any doubt please let me know in the comment section after this we are going to discuss the importance of algae Okay so let's start discussing the importance of algae 
so algae at least half of the total carbon dioxide fixation on earth is carried out by algae through photosynthesis so co2 is converted into or reduced into glucose during photosynthesis right so almost half of the total carbon dioxide is fixed by algae being photosynthetic because they produce food they increase the level of dissolved oxygen in the immediate environment there is a release of oxygen during photosynthesis as you know release of oxygen during photosynthesis that you are going to study in the chapter photosynthesis right now they are of paramount importance as primary producer of energy rich compound which form the basis of food cycle of all the aquatic animals right they are primary producers they synthesize food and other organism depend on it other organism depend on it you must have remembered your food chain right the producers the autotrophs are eaten by or consumed by uh, herbivores then herbivores are consumed by carnivores right so they are the primary producer they synthesize food then many species of por porphyra laminaria sagesum porphyra is red algae laminaria is brown algae sagesum is also brown algae are among the 70 species of marine algae that can be used as food so they can be used as food certain marine brown and red algae produce large amount of hydrocolloid i told you what are hydrocolloids water holding substances which have good water holding capacity like algin and carrageen and also agar all are used commercially and they are extracted from the cell wall of algae agar is one of the commercial product obtained from gelidium and gracilaria i told you gelidium and gracilaria are the source of agar and agar is used agar is used in many of the things like preparation of ice cream jellies and also is used to grow microbes in laboratories so yes agar is very important this point is very important chlorella its position is also confusing according to some system of classification they are included in protista according to some system of classification they are included in clingdom plantae right so you can also study uh, study chlorella here uh, chlorella is a unicellular alga rich in protein and used in food supplement even by space traveler it is a source of protein so chlorella is basically grown at a very higher scale and protein is extracted from the chlorella and used as a food right so these are some of the importance of algae i hope every point is clear is uh, if there any confusion even now you can let me know in the comment section come on guys please ask doubts so here this is the importance of algae that they do photosynthesis they fix carbon dioxide they can be used as a source of food they can be used as a source of algin agar and carrageen all these products are used as a are commercially used so uh, after this i'm going to show you some real pictures of algae that how actually algae looks like especially brown and uh, red algae because green algae i have already shown you uh, in the last lecture so let's see as you can see from the color it is a red algae it is porphyra beta and this is polysiphonia this is how porphyra and polysiphonia looks look like both are red algae then this is beta fucus and you can see air bladders you can see air bladders here this is fucus this is how sargassum look like 
Fucus. This is how sargassum look like. This is brown algae, beta. Pheophyce. Brown algae. And this is laminaria, kelp. This is laminaria. This is how laminaria looks like. Laminaria is one of the example of kelp, which means giant algae. They can grow up to 100 meters. So yes, I have shown you how algae actually look like. I hope you find it very interesting. After this, we'll be starting with our next group of plant that are bryophytes. So now we'll be starting with our next group of plant bryophytes. As you know, bryophytes, they were the first terrestrial plants. They were the first terrestrial plants. They were the first embryophytes. They were the first embryophytes. Embryo was formed first in bryophytes. Algae is a non-embryophyte. Algae is a non-embryophyte. Right? They like to live in moist moist, humid and shady places. They like to live in moist, humid and shady places. They are terrestrial but still they are dependent on water for fertilization. That's why they are called as amphibians of plant kingdom. Amphibians of plant kingdom which means they are dependent on water they live on live in on land but dependent on water for sexual reproduction they are dependent on water for sexual reproduction. That's why we call them amphibians of plant kingdom. Right? Now, beta, their main body is, I told you in algae, the main body is, is gametophyte. Here also, beta, main body is gametophyte, which means gamete producing body gamete producing body so gametophyte is gamete producing body right this gametophyte is haploid which means it's every cell is having only one set of chromosome there is no true leaf root and stem I will tell you what you mean by true leaf stem or root. No vascular bundle. There is no vascular bundle in bryophytes. Right? There is no vascular bundle in bryophyte. Beta, true means Diploid and having vascular bundles. But as you know, they don't have diploid body and they don't have vascular bundle. So which means they don't have any true leaf stem and root. However, their body is more differentiated than algae. Their body is more differentiated than algae. So I'm again explaining this. The main body of bryophytes is gametophyte. The body that you see 
in bryophyte is gametophyte gamete producing body haploid which means the every cell is having one set of chromosome they don't have true leaf stem and leaf true means they should it should be diploid and having vascular bundle but as you know they are haploid and they don't have any vascular bundle which means no true body uh, true leaf root and stem which means i can write it in another way that true leaf stem and root are absent true leaf stem and root are absent and i can write it here vascular bundle is absent vascular bundles are absent which means xylem and phloem are not present so this is about the introduction of bryophytes bryophytes are further divided into two groups liverworts and mosses so i am going to explain you one by one what are liverworts and what are mosses i hope everything is clear till here i am giving you few seconds to understand it let me know if you have any kind of doubt till here right so i can uh, write it here that bryophytes is divided and classified into bryophytes are classified into liverworts and mosses so in the next slide we'll start with liverworts and then we'll talk about mosses so remember bryophytes are all uh, also haploid like algae algae were uh, algae are also haploid and bryophytes are also haploid so let's start with the first group of bryophytes which is liverworts also known as hepatocopsida because their body specially looks like liver their body looks like liver that's why liverworts or hepatocopsida beta their member are generally thalloid has generally thalloid body which means thallus like body not differentiated but leafy member are also present leafy member are also present like this so thalloid body is of this this is what we call as marchantia this is one of the example of liverwort very important example and this is known as porella this is the leafy member this is the leafy member and this is the thalloid member this is the thalloid member and this is the leafy member marchantia and porella right so in liverwort body is dorsi ventral which means we see two sides dorsal and ventral two different sides so in liverworts beta the body is dorsi ventral which means dorsal side and ventral side there are two different side dorsal and ventral side right dorsal and ventral side now this marchantia you can see this is beta female body right this is female thallus of marchantia and this is 
male thallus right this is female thallus this is female body and this is male body and uh, here you can find a uh, female sex organ and this is the stalk archegonia for which is having female sex organ and here this is the stalk this is the stalk which is having male sex organ so beta this is these are male sex organs so here you can find female sex organs here you can find male sex organ the stalk which is having female sex organ is archegoniophore the stalk which is having male sex organ is known as enthridiophore right and here you can see a cup like structure known as gamma cup right what is this gamma cup beta this gamma cup has gamma i will explain what is gamma gamma is a asexual bud helps in asexual reproduction right gamma has uh, gamma cup has gamma which is helping in asexual reproduction so yes marcantia at the same time can do both asexual and sexual reproduction sexual reproduction is done through male and female sex organ and asexual reproduction is done through mostly gamma mostly gamma right here it is porella it is a leafy member this is porella right so this is marcantia and this is porella these are the two examples of liverworts these are the two examples of liverworts right i hope everything is clear in the female body female sex organ is present in male body male sex organ is present the stalk which is having female sex organ is known as archegoniophore the stalk which is having male sex organ is known as enthridiophore and there is a gamma cup like structure which is having gamma gamma helps in asexual reproduction so i am going to explain you now so liverworts vegetative reproduction asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction right so vegetative reproduction generally occurs through fragmentation the body is divided into many fragments and each fragment can give rise to new individual asexual reproduction through gamma right so beta this is gamma cup and this is what we call gamma this is gamma cup it is present on the body it is present on the body of marcantia this is gamma beta right it is a multicellular green green means it can do photosynthesis and asexual bud when it detaches from the body it can give rise to new body when it detaches it can give rise to new body when this gamma detaches from the body it can give rise to new body and remember gamma is only uh, present in marcantia gamma is only present in marcantia 
लेट्स टॉक अबाउट सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन बेटा सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन थ्रू मेल सेक्स ऑर्गन विच इज नोन एज एंथ्रीडियम एंड फीमेल सेक्स ऑर्गन विच इज नोन एज आर्कीगोनियम सो सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इज थ्रू मेल एंड फीमेल सेक्स ऑर्गन मेल सेक्स ऑर्गन इज नोन एज एंथ्रीडियम एंड फीमेल सेक्स ऑर्गन इज नोन एज आर्कीगोनियम सो रिमेंबर बेटा here vegetative reproduction is through fragmentation asexual reproduction is through gamma gamma is present on a cup shaped structure known as gamma cup and it is present on the body of marchantia whenever gamma is mature it will detach from the body and wherever finds a suitable condition it will give rise to new marchantia new marchantia and next is is uh, next is sexual reproduction right sexual reproduction occurs through male and female sex organ enthridium and archegonium so now i am going to make you the life cycle of liverworts uh, basically with respect to sexual reproduction i hope everything is clear till here right so liverworts their main body i am talking about here about marchantia right so their main body let's make it with different di uh, different color so this is the female body and this is male body right these are fe male and female sex organ so these are their beta their main body is gametophyte right here i'm talking about marchantia with respect to marchantia so what happens beta male and female sex organ are formed they have male sex organ and female sex organ right male sex organ is enthridium and female sex organ is archegonium beta everything is haploid till here so n means haploid and 2n means diploid remember now enthridium will form male gamete and archegonium will form female gamete also known as oosphere also known as oosphere remember male gamete is haploid and female gamete is also haploid male gamete is having two flagella whereas female gamete is non motile female gamete is non motile whereas male gamete is having two flagella remember the male gamete will come towards the female gamete through water male gamete swim towards female gamete or male gamete reaches to female gamete through water i can write it again male gamete reaches to female gamete through water 
that's why that's when they require water for fertilization and fusion occurs and they form zygote fusion occurs fusion occurs and both fuse and form zygote zygote is now is now diploid haploid haploid together forms diploid condition now zygote will form embryo embryo is also diploid now the embryo will form a structure known as sporophyte it is also diploid it is also diploid so beta here this is the gametophyte and above it sporophyte is formed this is sporophyte so this is the female body which was haploid gametophyte this is what we call as a sporophyte sporophyte is diploid right so sporophyte is formed on the female body this is what we call as capsule this is sita this is foot so there are three parts of sporophyte capsule sita and foot everything is diploid beta everything is diploid now what will happen we know that bryophyte is haploid so the encapsule meiosis occur remember here you must have studied meiosis so meiosis occurs and haploid spores are formed and upon germination they can give rise to new body they can give rise to new body i am again explaining you beta these are male and female body right this is anthridia this is archegonia male and female sex organ main body is gametophyte always haploid they are having male and female sex organ haploid both will produce gamete haploid male gamete is motile having two flagella female gamete is non motile the male gamete will swim towards the female gamete through water zygote will form then embryo then sporophyte is formed on parent body so sporophytic sporophyte is somehow parasitic it is formed on the female body right so this is the female body gametophyte above which sporophyte is formed female body is haploid sporophyte is diploid sporophyte has three parts capsule sita and foot capsule is diploid and meiosis occur haploid spores are formed the capsule will open the spores will disperse and wherever they find a suitable condition the spore will germinate into new body the spore will germinate into new body right so this is the life cycle of mosses uh, liverworts this is the life cycle of liverwort or uh, i have told you the life cycle here with respect to marchensia there are many other members as well but i have explained the life cycle with respect to marchensia i hope this is clear to all of you after this we are going to understand the mosses that will be the last topic for today we have almost completed the bryophytes i am giving you few seconds to understand it if you have any 
uh, doubt please let me know i'm going to write where mitosis occur and where meiosis occur mitosis 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 but here meiosis occur after this we are going to understand the uh, mosses haploid and diploid condition to remember it it is very important so do not forget to remember which structure is haploid and which structure is diploid okay then let's talk about mosses also known as bryopsida also known as bryopsida right so uh, the important thing here is that in mosses the gametophyte is divided into two things the mature leafy body and the juvenile structure so here gametophyte is divided into two things leafy mature body or juvenile body we'll start with leafy mature body right so let's start with its main body this is the main axis the stem like structure and here you will find spirally arranged leaf and here you will find the rhizoids acha remember here this are rhizoids root like structure so this is stem like structure this is leaf like structure they are not true leaf stem and these are rhizoids which is root like structure and it is multicellular here it is multicellular here rhizoids is a root like structure where where is in marchensia in liverworts the rhizoids are unicellular remember here here rhizoids are unicellular rhizoids are the root like structure they are not root they are root like structure which helps in attachment right so here they are unicellular but in mosses it is multicellular so this is bachche leafy stage of gametophyte this is gametophyte haploid leafy stage because we can see leaf like structure in this stage it is a mature stage so what happen here is male and female sex organ on the same body generally so male sex organ female sex organ right male sex organ is enthridium female sex organ is archegonium here also both are haploid here also both are haploid right so they will form gametes through mitosis through mitosis they will form gamete male gamete female gamete male gamete is having two flagella it is motile and female gamete is non motile remember male has to come to female here and both are haploid both are haploid now both will fuse male gamete 
वेलकम टू फीमेल गैमीट थ्रू वाटर दे आर लिविंग ऑन लैंड बट दे रिक्वायर वाटर फॉर फर्टिलाइजेशन एंड द फ्यूजन आकर एंड आफ्टर फ्यूजन दे फॉर्म जायगोट जायगोट इज डिप्लॉयड हेप्लॉयड प्लस हेप्लॉयड फॉर्म्स अ डिप्लॉयड जायगोट नाउ बेटा द जायगोट आफ्टर माइटोसिस it will form embryo and embryo after mitosis forms sporophyte on gametophyte here also sporophyte is formed on gametophyte and till here everything is diploid beta remember the sporophyte is diploid but gametophyte is haploid gametophyte is haploid okay so now what happens is so this is the gametophyte these are rhizoids these are gametophyte and sporophyte is formed above this okay so this is gametophyte which is haploid and this is bachche sporophyte which is haploid right and this is capsule everything is diploid here everything belongs to sporophyte is diploid so capsule is also diploid right now what will happen in the capsule beta of course the meiosis will occur after meiosis it will form spores the spores are haploid the spores are haploid now spores they don't directly form the main body what they do they germinate they germinate and form a filamentous structure known as protonema this is primary protonema it is a green filamentous structure the juvenile body i am talking about here is protonema the juvenile body that i am talking about is protonema primary protonema is formed it is haploid beta now what happens the fragmentation occur the fragmentation occurs after this what will happen the secondary protonema is formed this is secondary protonema everything is haploid now and in secondary protonema you will find a bud this is a bud and the bud will germinate and form a new body the bud will germinate and form a new body i am again telling you this is quite complicated than liver words i am again telling you this is the main body male and female sex organ they are having male will 
male sex organ will produce male gamete female sex organ will produce female gamete both will fuse zygote will form then embryo then sporophyte on the main body the sporophyte has capsule capsule will undergo meiosis it will force spores the capsule will open the spore will disperse wherever they find a suitable condition they will form a filamentous body known as primary protonema then fragmentation occur the primary protonema is fragmented into many pieces each piece will form secondary protonema secondary protonema has a bud over it and this bud germinate and form a new body and form a new body so i know the life cycle of mosses is quite complicated than the liverworts this will be the last topic that we are going to discuss today there's lot for you to understand so make sure before you come to next lecture you have revised everything you have read each and every word from ncert right so your task for next lecture is to read the ncert and to read my notes and watch the lecture okay so i'm giving you a few seconds to understand it in the next lecture we are going to talk about uh, the importance of bryophytes importance of bryophytes and i will uh, tell you some example of mosses i will tell you some example of mosses okay so before we end today's lecture we are going to solve some questions make sure you are done with this you have understood everything here okay then my first question is isogamy with non flagellated gametes which means gametes are similar but uh, they are having non flagellated gametes example is spirogyra example is spirogyra in which both the gametes are having no flagella and they are having similar gametes male and female gametes are similar next question is which one of the pair are unicellular alga right gelidium and gracilaria are red algae and multicellular anomena is a bacteria beta volvox is a green algae colonial algae right laminaria is a brown algae sargassum is also brown algae both are multicellular let's see here chlorella is a green algae which is unicellular but here beta spirulina is cyanobacteria and bacteria is also unicellular so although spirulina is not a algae it is a cyanobacteria it is blue green algae it is a bacteria not algae but because this is the most appropriate option to choose here so that's why we will choose c option but remember spirulina is a cyanobacteria it is not a alga but because that is the most appropriate option here that's why we choose spirulina right i hope this is clear to everyone why we have chosen chlorella and spirulina chlorella is a green algae unicellular but spirulina is a cyanobacteria but we don't have any other choice that's why we will choose option number c here so i hope everything is clear to you i try to make it as much as interesting i can so let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed the lecture and see you in the next see you next week in the next lecture till then take care everyone bye